Virtual reality. Have there ever been two words quite so able to make you excited and also disappointed at the same time? Well, I guess possibly hoverboard, bacon coke, and of course, Tinder date. But still, for me at least, VR takes the virtual biscuit of excite appointment. You see, the allure of transporting yourself into a fully realized alternative reality by simply donning a visor is just too strong. And while the promise of this experience has been around for, well, longer than I have, we're still not quite there. But maybe that's all about to change. The last two years have seen the R in VR come to stand for return, resurrection, and recombobulation. That's not a word. Actually, it is. Recombobulation. Now, the act of recombobulating. Of course. Now, over the course of the next month or two, Reality Check is going to dive deep into the world of VR in a special three-part series covering the history, rise, and future of this fascinating technology. Part one, where we begin today, is all about the history of virtual reality. So, come with me as we discover where it all began, why it faltered, and how we ultimately arrived at this virtual renaissance. The year is 1965. Russian cosmonaut Alexei Leonov has become the first person to walk in space. Lyndon B. Johnson is president of the USA, and a man called Ivan Sutherland has set in motion the wheels of what we will ultimately call virtual reality. He did so with the creation of the ultimate display, the world's first head-mounted display, or HMD. Lovingly nicknamed the Sword of Damocles due to its room-filling size, this device placed the user in a true virtual world, albeit a wireframe one. But wait a minute, maybe that's not the true beginning of our story. You see, if placing the user in a virtual world is the ultimate goal of VR, then maybe we need to begin our story about 10 years earlier with the creation of the Sensorama. Its inventor, Morten Heilig, conceived the creation of an experienced theatre in his 1955 paper, The Cinema of the Future. Basically a box you could stick your head in, watch a movie, and have all of your senses stimulated. By 1962, he even had a working prototype able to display stereoscopic 3D images in a wide-angle view, provide body tilting, play stereo sound, and also trigger blasts of wind and aromas at specific points during each of the five purpose-built short films. Regardless of where we begin our story, though, there's a long way to go from either of these starting points to the VR technology of today. So, let's take a look at how we got from retro to rift. Steady development of early VR tech during the 60s and 70s was driven chiefly by the US military's work on vehicle simulators, specialist teams at NASA, and also researchers at the University of Utah. This progress, in tandem with advancements in computer graphics technology, really began to gain momentum in the 1980s. And in 1985, something truly monumentous happened. I was born! And also a team at NASA made something. The Virtual Environment Workstation. This next step in VR consisted of two LCD TV displays, wide-angle stereoscopic optics, and a motorcycle helmet. Also, the term virtual reality was first coined by Lanier Later, a member of the team involved in the creation of the gloves designed for use with the VEW. Now, we can't really talk about the history of virtual reality without mentioning the inspirational Randy Pausch. Pausch is perhaps best known for his wonderful and moving 2007 talk, The Last Lecture, Really Achieving Your Childhood Dreams, which he delivered shortly after receiving a terminal diagnosis resulting from the spread of his pancreatic cancer. It really is a wonderful video. You'll be laughing one minute and on the brink of tears the next. It's also a fantastic lesson in public speaking and presenting. Just go and watch it, straight after this. But what did he have to do with virtual reality? Well, as well as working for Disney on early VR projects, he founded the Building Virtual Worlds course in 1998 at Carnegie Mellon University, which he taught for 10 years, inspiring countless students to work in the field and propel the technology forward. And speaking of the 90s, that is when VR video games began to emerge. The earliest publicly available VR games came in the form of special arcade machines. In 1991 to 93, the company Virtuality Group created a line of advanced VR machines with stereoscopic 3D visuals and mind-blowing 276 by 372 resolution. But success in early games VR was rare. 
Sega announced Sega VR in 1991, and it was even showcased at CES in 93. However, the console never actually materialized as a retail product, despite reportedly having four games developed specifically for it. And you know what? This was probably for the best, as we all know what happened to the VR console that was released a few years later. Ta-da! The Virtual Boy. This 32-bit tabletop 3D video game console developed by Nintendo was marketed as the first portable video game console capable of displaying true 3D graphics. Which, I guess, is true, so long as you like the colors red and black. Oh, you do? Well then, good news! Actually, it was bad news, for Nintendo at least. The unit was a commercial flop due in part to its price tag, $179 at launch, which is about $250 in today's money. While not an outrageous cost for a console per se, this was still a significant spend for something this new and strange. Alongside this issue, customers just didn't like using it. It was nigh impossible to game with the thing in a comfortable position. Add to that the lack of software support, a death knell for any budding system, and it's not a surprise the Virtual Boy was an actual failure. And in fact, these three problems that killed the Virtual Boy, cost, lack of software support, and customer apathy, epitomized the reasons why VR in general failed to live up to its promise in the 90s. By the end of the decade, virtual reality, in the world of games at least, had all but vanished from the scene. Across forums and developer events, it was barely spoken of again. Until, that is, the 1st of August 2012 and the launch of a Kickstarter project for a little device called Oculus Rift. And that is where part two of this series is going to pick up in a few weeks. As always, guys, let me know what you thought of this episode in the comments down below, or you can send me a tweet to at camfrasrob. Also, if you think I missed something in this episode, or there's something you'd like me to mention in future shows about virtual reality, do send me a message. Oh, and if you want to check out my resource list for this episode, then follow the link on screen now, or click the link in the description on YouTube to check out the Biblio page I made for this episode. See you guys next week.